How's it going, Teal Boys? It's time for the college football playoff. Right now, we're scheduled to play against uh, USC. That would be if we were just doing the standard BCS National Championship game. But it's an eight-team playoff that we've got to set up today. So let's just start right into the process with the utility tool. And let's go set up our eight-team playoff. We will go ahead and head into our save data and grab our USR data file. And now we can load in these playoffs and see who's made it. Uh, we know USC will be there. Uh, the question is, is Oklahoma going to make it? Who are, will our at-large uh, bids be and who are we going to be facing in this first round of the playoffs? And there it is. Okay, kind of uh, an old school conference matchup for us. Us at the number one seed will play number eight, South Alabama. Uh, one of the teams with the best records in college football this season. I believe they went 11-1 and one through the regular season, winning the Sun Belt. Number four, West Virginia won the Big 12. They will play Ohio State, who I believe won the Big 10. USC, who won the Pac-12, will play Tennessee, who is an at-large bid. And Oklahoma, funnily enough, they're an at-large bid, but they are the three seed in front of uh, number four, West Virginia. Uh, the Sooners will play Clemson. Uh, this is an interesting looking playoff. I like the way it's set. Let's go ahead and move on forward for that. We're totally fine with the way it looks. We won't be editing any of these bowl matchups, but we can take a quick look to see if there's any that are crazy. I don't see a lot of ranked matchups. We have a good Citrus Bowl between Ole Miss and Oregon. And other than that, not really any ranked bowl matchups. Uh, you know, all the ranked teams have made it into the playoffs, it seems. So we will save that, and then we can uh, just go right back in and get our playoffs underway. So after reloading the dynasty, we can see we are up against number 14, South Alabama. Uh, USA's 11-1 on the season. This is always going to be kind of broken, so we can't really look at the matchup other than knowing uh, they had a good season. We are likely going to beat them. Uh, I just, I mean, they not, they can't be that good. They're a Sunbelt team. It has been a long time since we've been beating up on Sunbelt teams, but uh, that's just kind of where we're at. Our final season stats you know before all the bowl games since the playoff teams will get a little bit of an advantage show raid on there as the third leading passer in the nation still 600 yards behind the miami quarterback running wise mike fontaine at just 774 yards puts him at 154th i got to imagine marquise is pretty high up there he gets to the sixth spot uh, quite a ways off that top spot um but still, 1,100, uh, almost a uh, perfect ones across the board, 1,112 on the season. Tackle-wise, it doesn't matter. Uh, Sack-wise, David Wilson gets up to eight, puts him 15th in the country. Interception, Stencer Stanley with a big one in the conference championship game, gets up to six and is the, well, tied for first with most interceptions on the season. And uh, Frederick, well, still isn't getting any recognition, but he has made a couple of field goals at the tops there in that uh the mid to high 50 range well let's go ahead and get this one underway uh first round of the playoffs set up what can we do south alabama is an 83 overall with an 83 defense and an 83 offense uh <laughs> i hate to say it but this might be a cakewalk of a first round for us um they don't have a whole lot of options so we are just going to have them in their standard away uniforms. First round of the playoffs aren't that important to us. So we can kind of mix up the look a little bit. Let's go uh, black and black this time. Um, and then next round we'll change it up because well, that's what we like to do. We like to work towards our standard home jerseys for the national championship game. So coming into this game, this 83 overall South Alabama team looks statistically pretty good. One of the best defenses in the country, best uh, overall on yards and passing yards, second best just behind us in rushing yards allowed. They only give up 21 points per game. Uh, they've dominated their schedule. Unfortunately for them, it's a sunbelt schedule. Top players for next season for this team are looking really good. Radon's going to be a 99 overall, most likely. So will Williams. Uh, Don Riley, very impressive. Their top players for next year into the mid 80s, uh, down to the low 80s, even with that outside linebacker Campbell. So 
Just, uh, I mean, they're going to have to play out of their minds to compete. Let's hope that we don't play down to their level and get upset in this first round of the playoffs. For South Alabama fans, today is a massive deal. Uh, for Coastal fans, maybe not so much. Should be expected to walk through this one as uh, we come into this game here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Uh, they will win the toss, so it looks like we are going to start with the football on this game. It would be pretty poetic for the season if Marquise just took one straight to the house. Not a great kick on the kickoff. Fielded at the four-yard line, but the blocking isn't there. Was close to uh, forming, but just didn't quite get there, so not a great return for us. Now, the Jaguars have the number two ranked rush defense in the country. We're not too worried about that. We're going to run right at them here on first down. Mike Fontaine gets six yards up the middle. My hope is that we can get out of this one early. Maybe uh, have this one mostly sealed up by the time the third quarter comes around. That way we can just rest our starters and avoid any chance of an injury. The last thing that we want is to see one of our star players go down in the first round. Uh, I'd like to treat this as a bye. We go for the little scramble with Raid on it. Works out pretty well. And we're going to try the trickeration on this one. First and 10 going with the flea flicker. Although it looks like they could be bringing pressure and they are. But we throw it up and there's Marquise Jackson. Makes a man miss. Couldn't make the second. He could have been gone. Instead, it's just 20 yards downfield. I say that like I'm disappointed. Can't be too upset with the way that that one works out. The play finally works for us. We don't get the flea flicker to work often, so it's nice to see. And I meant to hand that one off, but right on bailing me out with a great spin move and still finding nine yards. This has been solid so far on the drive. Certainly playing like we're facing off against an 83 overall team. Go with the short little dump off throw to Mike and get the first down once again. Let's go with the counter. JJ Barr in for his first carry of the game. The blocking is okay. He's able to get a few yards. We can establish our running game early and prove that we're not going to be pushed around at the line. That could do a whole lot for the momentum on the game as JJ keeps three more on his second carry. Definitely want to stay healthy though, as we would be playing West Virginia or Ohio State in the second round. Wide open in the end zone, it's Chad Bradshaw. A little bit late making that throw, right on. I think took a little bit of a shot, but Chad was wide open. Randell starts the game three of three through the air, now with a passing touchdown. Well, now markets can kick one away. Certainly should be a little bit harder for them to return. Will they bring it out of the end zone? They will. Getting a little bit risky with it. Oh, I just whiffed a big tackle that would have kept them so deep, but I think we did a great job anyways. There was a chance if we made that first tackle, they would have been inside the 15. Instead, they're at the 17 to start their drive, so even worse field position than we had. They're going to run it on first down. Kale Mackey's there for the stop after just a yard. I feel like our defense should be good enough that we don't need to get too aggressive dialing up the pressure in this one so that's what we're going to avoid doing is Kale Mackey had a chance for the interception couldn't get the tackle and Logan Smith and Spencer Stanley eventually bring him down South Alabama comes out in the hurry up for this third and six looking to keep their drive alive it looks like it's some sort of screen no I lost the running back but he's gonna throw it deep and Spencer Stanley with his seventh interception of the season terrible decision from the quarterback he had his running back wide open for the first down and a whole lot more but he tries to go for the hero play and it does not work out in the slightest. Coach has really got to be questioning Steve Johnson after that one as we're going to go for the home run ball on first down of this drive. It looks like they're bringing pressure. Can we get the pass off in time? Marquise Jackson wide open, catches it, and he's off to the races. Nobody's going to catch him. And just like that, we open up this lead 14 to nothing. And we really make South Alabama pay for that interception. They tried to bring the pressure. They got to Radon, but he's able to get the pass off in time. And he's now got his second passing touchdown of the game. I love that. Uh, fantastic for the momentum of this game. We'll make it so they are kind of forced to return another one. And they do get a better return this time, but honestly not by much. Well, let's see how strong our coverage can continue to be early in this game. Kind of expecting the draw, and there it is. Being chased down from behind by Durham Finch, who just didn't want to go for the tackle, I guess. They got 14 yards. That was a great run. We certainly can't allow that. 
First and 10, just like that. They're going to run it again. This time they're going to lose yards. Nowhere for Tommy Wheatley to go, and he loses two. Almost certainly expecting the pass on the second and 12. They're going to step back. No, it's another draw, and the blocking again is phenomenal. Just nobody there to plug the gap up the middle. There is a flag, though, and that could be the reason. Could this be coming back? Well, it's a clipping, but I don't know if that's the reason why they had the open space in the first place. Tight end gets called for it. It's second and nine now, so it was pretty much at the end of the play that that clipping happened. So just a little bit disappointing in the running department. They step back, looking to throw again, and over the middle they find Robertson. And he's got 18 yards across midfield. Defense locked them down the first time out. They're struggling this time. South Alabama getting some movement. This one a run. Don Riley was there for the tackle at the line, but just got shoved off. That one was a bit of an ego bruiser to Don. Hopefully he's okay. Second and five, another run up the middle, another broken tackle. Troy Hall trying to will this team to compete. Let's bring the pressure. Safety blitz, first and 10. I'm not having it. I want to get to these guys in the backfield. We should be able to dominate, but it's not happening. And there we go. The blitz does work. And Jenkins gets there for a loss of two. Last time they had a second and 12. It was a big run that was only eliminated because of a penalty. This second and 12, it's another big run, another broken tackle. And there's unfortunately for us no penalty on the play to bring it back. 16 yards and just like us not being afraid to run at the number two defense in the country they're not afraid to run at the number one rush defense in the country uh just uh showing us up both teams may be fraudulent in that department this one's an option out towards the edge we need jenkins to get the tackle and he does at the line uh, i don't like that we're having to bring pressure to get those stops though these plays should not come down to how many guys we end up rushing should be a lot better than that. Looking like they might throw on second and 10. It's going to be, no, another run. It's a counter. Can we get there in time? Just barely. We hold off the first and goal, but it's third and three inside the five. And that's the end of our first quarter. Up 14-0. Game it started great, but this defensive drive is not going well for us. Uh, Got to figure it out here because we don't have a whole lot of time before they're in the end zone. Bringing a rush on this third down. We'll see what we get. It looks like they're going to run the ball out towards the edge. Kale Mackey drags the running back down, and it will be fourth and five. They should go for this, but we'll see if they kick the field goal. Field goal formation is out and did not get tricked like we have been recently. We're in the safe zone. There's a false start, so that'll back them up and maybe make them reconsider going for a fake field goal. I still don't trust these guys. I think if you're in the playoffs as a G5 underdog like these guys, you should be going for it on fourth down every single time. But they are going to elect to take the points. The kick is through the uprights. And it's now 14-3 with uh, South Alabama. Probably a little bit disappointed on the end of that drive. The end of the first quarter was a little bit disappointing. The beginning of the second quarter, absolutely fantastic. I'm more than happy to hold them to three points as Marquise will have a chance on the return. Almost squeezed through there, but gets tackled. I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to just throw up another bomb, but we're not quite there. Got to run it a little bit more, and up the middle, Mike Fontaine goes. He fumbles the ball right into Robert Gray's hands, and the center just saved us from total disaster on the drive. Mike's got to hold on to that. We end up with four yards on the play, but my goodness, that was scary. Uh, how about a play action? Second and six. Let's throw the ball. No, let's scramble outside the pocket. Why is open, but Radon has a lot of space to work with. And, oh, he broke that tackle. I was trying to run out of bounds, but just accidentally did a little stutter step. So lucky that we didn't take a big hit there. Oh, not sure if this is the right decision, but we're going to hand it off again to Mike Fontaine. He's got the space up the middle, and this time he does hold on through the contact. And I think that we're going to keep running. The fake fly this time. Try to make them think it's going to Williams. Instead, it's a counter to Mike, and Fontaine has the first down. He's consistently getting good yards today. The problem is he has to hold on to the football, and that's not a certain thing so far in this game on fourth down looking to pass Marquise no it's Malcolm Williams is open he's gonna get shoved out of bounds inside the 30. looks like they want to bring pressure do we run it anyways mm, we got to throw this one up 
If they want to get aggressive, we'll uh, we'll prove to them that we're not scared. Looking for Marquis in the end zone. We're tossing it up. No, Radon gets hit as he's throwing it. Marquis uh, would have been wide open, but instead it's uh, Radon's first incompletion of the day. Five or six, four or five, something like that. Th second and ten will go to the air. Looks like they're bringing pressure again. And over the middle, we have Bo Lamb. And he's got us a first and goal. Six yards to Pater. We will run it on this first down. Following J.J. Barr. And the fullback gave us a good block. But we kind of lost our momentum near the line. So just a gain of three. We're just going to try to continue using the power. I know that Radon is absolutely on fire. But we'll hand it off on these plays. Mike Fontaine with multiple lead blockers. No problem getting into the end zone that time. Increases our lead a little bit more midway through this second quarter. Uh, I think we might be able to do what I was hoping and just play the backups. I think we may be able to do what I wanted at the beginning of the game and eventually throw in the backups. Try to avoid injury, get a couple guys some important experience, big reps in a big game, and hopefully that'll be enough just to still hold on. The Jaguars do get the ball to start the third quarter, so it's important we don't get burned there. They're going to step back, looking to throw. Quarterback scrambling, nowhere to go as he runs around to the pocket and he gets sacked by Don Riley for a loss of two. What can we do to slow him down? Second and 12, hoping for the best man. Goes in motion. It's going to be a run, looking towards the edge. Unfortunately, he couldn't break that tackle, so he just gets back to the line and it's third and 12. Question's going to be, what can we do to slow these guys down? We know it'll go to the air. But whereabouts in set air will it go? They're throwing it short and... Oh, how do we not, like, just wrap him up and bring him down? The backup running back, Wheatley, just gets hit and stumbles forward until he eventually gets all 12 yards that he needed. So disappointing. Should have had him stopped. Jaguars have taken their first time out now with... Two minutes left in the half. They're definitely going to be passing the ball a lot near the end of this one. What can we do to stop him? No, this one a run. They give it to the tight end and he gets a couple of yards. Not fully certain I agree with the concept of taking a timeout and then running it under two minutes. I could have just done that from the hurry up, but here we are. It's third and six. They step back to throw and Travis Daughtry gets it. Going to move into the zone for a little bit. Our man's getting exposed just enough for me to be a little bit concerned. They'll step back again, looking to throw. Quarterback, no time, scrambles, takes a hit, and eventually gets sacked for a loss of three. Clock is still moving. We might be taking our timeout soon. I do want to score at least one more time in this half. They are going to look back to throw. Quarterback scrambles again. We do hit him. He's getting the stiff arm cheese of his life, though. And it's third and three. We're going to take our first timeout. Let's see if we can hold these guys. We have the QB spy in now because he's been showing he wants to run. This one to run out towards the edge. Phillips can't get there. Slowed him down, though. And Tommy Wheatley can't pick up the first down. We take the second time out, but it's fourth and inches. And they're going to go for it. I'm expecting a run 100%. We'll see if we can jam the line or something. Maybe a run out towards the edge. It's handed off up the middle, and we miss the tackle. They're going to get the first down and a big chunk of yards after that. Not going to plan on defense right now. We can't seem to slow these guys down. This one thrown up and oh my gosh, Sandcastle got burned, but the receiver dropped the football. We were absolutely bailed out on that one. Nothing else that you can say about it. Second and 10. They're going to look to throw again over the middle. They find a man. Uh, he's not going to get the first down, but again, third and inches. And I'm bringing the pressure here. A lot of pressure. Uh-oh, they step back to throw. Somebody's going to be up in there. It is. Daniel Pierce gets it. And he gets out of bounds. This is a really disappointing drive. Can't seem to do anything to get these guys off the field right now. User David Wilson. See if we can get him sack number nine of the season. They're going to run the ball. It's such a terrible decision. Clock's going to be moving now. Well, obviously, they're going to pass it now. Surprised they didn't spike it. Pressure there. No penalties. That one gets just batted away. We did get that pressure on the quarterback, so that was nice to see. But can we stop them? Third and 10, 20 seconds left in the half. They'll step back, looking to throw. Somebody's going to be up in quarterback getting, well, he just threw it down into the ground. Fourth and 10. 
They will take the field goal, I believe them this time, so... Not gonna try to do anything to protect against a fake. Kick is up and it's easily good that time. 21 to six. Well, 12 seconds plus Marquise Jackson equals more than enough time to score a touchdown for us. Can we extend the lead before heading into the locker room? The blocking isn't great. So we have a timeout in eight seconds to try and throw a couple downfield. No reason not to just throw up a couple of quick bombs. We'll see if anybody can get open. First one I'm trying for Marquise and it's intercepted. I think that might just be my user getting out of the way a little bit too much. So now they're gonna have an attempt to throw a Hail Mary themselves. That was just a stupid decision. Uh, terrible defense to end the half and a terrible attempt at uh, throwing a couple deep. Really, really disappointed. They won't go with the Hail Mary, but they are gonna get a ton of rushing yards because, well, why would the number one rush defense in the country be able to slow them down? <laughs> Uh, we're up 21-6, but I'm not happy about it. Uh, going in the locker room, we got a lot to work on. Let's hope that uh, we can figure a couple of things out and come out into this third quarter and shut them down on defense like we did the first time out because I just uh, I feel like we should be up by at least four touchdowns right now. Really, really need things to change. If this drive goes as long as it has... Uh, the past couple of drives and we just can't get them off the field. I'm gonna be really disappointed Sure, we've only given up two field goals, but that's too much South Alabama has already run 30 plays in this game Unacceptable expecting a run on first down. I'm calling it up the middle we will be out towards the edge But there is a good stop McBride gets there for the loss of three The problem is we're doing a great job of getting them in long yardage situations but then we do nothing to get them off the field. This time, quarterback's going to scramble a lot of room, as he always seems to have. And he gets nine yards out of the scramble. So they're forcing us, essentially, to pretty much have a spy. Uh, that's kind of what I tried to call as a play, but it just didn't work. And we got stuck in the zone, and of course, they convert the first down. It just feels like we can't do anything to stop these guys at the moment. First down, another play action. Kale Mackey is there for the tackle. They still get two yards. Quarterback has eight completions, but only 77 yards. So he's not getting big completions, but it's happening consistently. Could we see the same play? It's just going to be, you know, it's a counter this time. And we're lucky that Wheatley didn't have any more space to work with because that would have been a big, big gain. 13 carries now for 69 yards for the running back. They've got this third down and then they will step back to throw. It looks like a screen. I was way too late to react to it. It's a miracle if Don Riley can get there and he did, but it'd be a miracle if we could get a tackle right now. Tommy Wheatley just shrugging off defenders. So that makes another third down. We fail to stop this South Alabama team. They are just moving at will on that down and there's nothing that we can do against it. Second and nine now. They're pretty much in field goal range again. What can we do to do anything to slow them down? It looks like it's going to be a run. It is a handoff kind of out towards the edge. Another broken tackle. And Ali May gets four yards. So that brings up another third and five. And I have zero confidence in the defense to be able to get this one done. Absolutely none. It's another screen. We should have another player there, but a missed tackle. And it's another first down for the Jaguars. This is not a championship winning defense at this rate. Very, very disappointed. They run the counter and it's going to be another first down. This time inside the 10. I'm about to bring in the second string defense because certainly they couldn't do worse than this absolutely atrocious we're bringing blitz after blitz now and we still can't keep them behind the line of scrimmage nothing gonna slow me down from bringing the blitzes on this one man in motion space available there's a ball fumbled maybe i couldn't tell what happened there the camera angle changed it says he got three yards uh and he's injured well, that's a uh, maybe a lucky change of pace for us well third and goal we're coming out, bringing the pressure. We are in the goal line set, hoping for the best as they will run it up the middle and we just miss. We had a chance to get to Charles Woods, but he punches it into the end zone. And it's a one score game in the third quarter. That is not how this should be playing out. If the offense can't find the end zone on this drive, I'm going to be terrified. 
Oh my gosh. This is, we should have had the second string in already, but we just can't seem to put anything together. Marquise with a great return, stays on his feet almost to midfield. We needed that desperately because I don't know if I can trust the offense right now. If the defense is playing that poorly, what's to say the other side of the ball isn't going to do the same. A run for the middle for Mike Fontaine. Works pretty well for five yards. Averaging over four yards per carry for Mike. We will give him the ball again on second down. Try to set ourselves up nicely. And yeah, that'll do work more than enough. He gets eight yards that time. Ooh, the running back there. Paul for South Alabama. Out basically for the rest of the season. Uh, Two-week injury. If they're not going to make it past this game, means it's over. We find Bo Lamb, and he's got us another big catch up the middle. Uh, well, somebody wants to play. Kudos to him for showing up. Unfortunately, if we score this touchdown this quickly, it's going to be good news, but also bad news because our defense has zero time to rest in between these sets. Is Mike? Tons of white jerseys in the area, but he finds the end zone. They just couldn't do anything about that. And it's 28 to 13. Now we get our lead back, but still so much time for the Jaguars to work with. All right. Well, hopefully they got enough of a breather because we desperately need a stop. I would love it if they just wanted to, like, fumble the ball or throw a pick, though. That would make my life so much easier. Good return for John Lambert. Not going to hold them to bad field position this time. I guess the question now becomes, what do we do to stop them, if anything? First and 10, kind of expecting the run. No, they will step back to throw. The quarterback on the run has a guy completely wide open, and it's Leon Sandcastle getting burned. He is always disappointing me. I don't think the man coverage is going to work the rest of this game. It's going to be zone or bust because man has done nothing for us. Hell, even the zone isn't doing anything right now. Our defense just doesn't have an answer at this point in the game, which is incredibly scary. Half of them are considered on fire, which means they should be playing better, but almost feels like we're playing worse than the start of the game. Time for us to lock in, see what we can do. Bringing a blitz with Kale Mackey around the edge. Quarterback all the time in the world. Throws it up, a man completely wide open. Almost two guys. They might have tackled each other before we could have ever gotten there. So it's another big game, and the South Alabama fans here at this one are going crazy. A run out towards the edge, the blocking impeccable. Don Riley thankfully gets the stop, but it's not before they get seven more yards. You got to think, is South Alabama playing with a little bit more intensity, trying to show that uh, the Sun Belt isn't anything to be ashamed of playing for? We left it many years ago. They're trying to show that we shouldn't have. They're really power five, right? Lambert now another player injured for South Alabama he's out for a quarter and we have them in another third down we have not stopped these well today can we get one finally all the time in the world quarterback has a man open he's not gonna throw it and there he beats me I got caught sleeping as the receiver turned around and of course they convert feels like they are almost perfect on third downs today Don Riley his 11th tackle of the game but I feel like it doesn't mean anything. This one, a run up the middle. Nobody even close to getting the stop. Charles Wood gets in, and again, it's just a one-score game with over a quarter to play. Oh, man. Eight points with 10 seconds left in the third. Even if our offense keeps scoring, if the defense does nothing, we run the risk of them converting an onside kick, and we can't return the ball against them either. I think I might have to try to start playing possession here and just run them out of time to do anything. So maybe a lot more running for Mike Fontaine coming, but then we run the risk of fumbling the ball. So we are in a lot of danger. Uh, we're going to head into the fourth quarter up eight, but not at all feeling confident that we're going to win this game. We came into this one feeling supremely confident, and we started the game so well, but... Uh, since the start, it's been nothing great for us. We'll go ahead and throw up a quick one. And I'm calling this a touchdown. I don't know if Marquise catches it on the run. Nope, it's in stride. And he's gone. I'm going to slow him down. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I tried to slow him down. Just a little bit to burn a couple seconds, but he stopped on me. Oh, that was uh, unintentionally really, really, really bad sportsmanship. Just stopping a couple yards shy. <laughs> Thank goodness he still goes in. 
But once again, we increased the lead super quick, and now our defense has to come back out. And I don't like that. We only took 20 seconds off the clock on our drive. So more than enough time for the Jaguars to work with. They'll take the touchback and get to work on trying to make this a game. I think if we play like this in any of the other rounds against better defenses, uh, you know, there's a chance our offense doesn't do as well as they have and we come away with a loss. So if things don't shore up on defense for the next couple of rounds, assuming we make it that far, things could get awfully scary pretty quick. Certainly trying to leave this team with another national championship, but we're not out of the water yet. Expecting the run. It's an option out towards the edge, and oh, I thought I got called for maybe an offside there, but we get to the quarterback. He doesn't pitch it away. And now it's our toughest test. Another third down. So what can we do out in the 3-3-5? Three, three, not rushing a whole lot, but also not bringing a crazy amount of pressure. Kale Mackey gets in there and deflects it. It's fourth and 10. They might have to go for it, but at least we stopped them on third down. It's going to be the pump formation for South Alabama, but this season has really had me scarred with teams going for it in these situations. So not the punt return, but the punt safe zone means Marquise is going to have an awfully hard time returning this, if at all, and he muffed the punt. So I, I don't know what happened. He muffed the punt. My Windows key got hit. And South Alabama has the football. Shouldn't just call the fair catch. This is disastrous. Nothing good happening there. First and ten. Five minutes to go. They'll step back looking to throw, and it's a man open over the middle. Sandcastle getting burned again. Can we get out of here at all? Oh my gosh, it's never ending. They step back looking to throw again. Quarterback scrambling. Nobody stepping up, and he's got another first down on the ground. Certainly we had the game ended if we could have just fielded the punt, but Marquise couldn't do it. First and 10, this one, a quarterback keeper still not down, finally. Finally gets tackled. If he just veers an inch to the right, he's up the field for a lot. What can we do to slow him down? Second and nine, this one looks like it's gonna be a screen. Don Riley should be there, but again, can't get the tackle. So they get positive yards out of a play that should have been negative. This has been rough all game long. They're looking to throw. They're looking to throw. It's another screen. Taylor gets the tackle. It's fourth and 12. That is massive. What can we do to slow these guys down? Three and a half minutes left in the game. We know they'll go to the air all the time in the world. Trying to cover it. Quarterback finally gets sacked. It's a turnover on down and we will get the ball back with not a whole lot of time on the clock and up 15. Bruce shoulder, another small injury for a South Alabama player is I'm not even going to mess around. We are going straight to clock burning mode. We cannot afford to let South Alabama stay in this game any longer than they already have. 300 total yards given up in this one. We have just about 60 more than them. Let's hope that this drive turns into a decent amount more as well. Mike Fontaine fighting for the yards gets us a crucial first down. Curious to see if we'll see the Jaguars take their timeouts as we tick under two and a half minutes to play. We'll run the read option right on keeping it. Should have some positive yards and ooh. I don't like him taking a hit like that. He did get three and there's the first timeout for the Jaguars. So we need another first down. What can Mike Fontaine do? The offensive line has been phenomenal and out towards the edge that time it's third and inches as the second timeout is taken. See what we can do here. We're just gonna run the counter up the middle. We only need those inches. Can we get them? The line looks good. Mike Fontaine knocks a couple of guys over on his way to picking up the first down. The Jaguars have taken their final timeout of the game. And we're just going to keep handing it off to the true freshman running back and letting him do some work. Even there, somehow finding three yards. From midfield now, we're going to try a fly sweep. Give it to Marquise. Allow him to get a couple of more yards potentially. Uh, yeah, he does a great job. Picking up five on the ground is certainly fine with me. Third and two. I think we... Ooh, can we just take the knee? We might have to punt the ball away, but... I am 100% fine with that. Try to let every second tick off the clock. We take the knee. We will have to run one more play, but 
that's going to be it. Not going to punt this one away. Uh, we're going to pitch it out and hopefully we can run for four seconds. But that's going to be enough for us to move on from the first round of the playoffs. It was a tough one. Pitch gets away. Mike Fontaine running towards the edge. Zero on the clock so we can get tackled. We'll lose three yards, but we escape with the victory. This one was all too close. Much more interesting of a game than I expected it to be when Marquis muffed that punt. Oh my gosh. I thought for a second that they were going to pull off the, the upset, but we survive at the end of the day. A couple of big plays, but just the story of the game has to be our defense struggling to stop these guys on third and long and just unable to get off the field, it seemed like, almost the entire game. South Alabama held scoreless in the first and fourth quarter is the reason that we get away with that. Uh, <laughs> That was rough. 140 rushing yards for the Jaguars, 17 first downs. Uh, they beat us in the turnover battle. Uh, we ended up passing pretty well, but there's a, a tough, difficult game all around. It's certainly... Uh, a lot higher difficulty level than I expected coming into it. South Alabama, for what was an 83 overall team, played incredibly well. Their offensive player of the game uh, is Charles Woods. Two carries and a touchdown. Really not that impressive. Not who I would have gone for. And their defensive player of the game, the guy with the interception. For us, defensively, it's Don Riley with his 12 tackles and a sack. And right on Randell is our offensive player of the game. 9 of 11 through the air for 257 yards and four touchdowns. Another five carries for 46 yards. So we have won the Peach Bowl. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Certainly not an easy one. Let's go ahead now and figure out our next opponent. Take a look at uh, the remaining playoff matches. First on our list will be who we are playing in the next round between Ohio State and West Virginia. Uh, both teams pretty solid. Let's go ahead and sim through it. I didn't see the answer. It's going to be West Virginia winning 24 to 10. So the big 12 champs now 12 and one, and we will face them in the playoff semifinals, Tennessee and USC in the Fiesta Bowl, nine and three, 10 and two. Are we going to see the SEC or the Pac-12 move forward into the semifinals it is the sec team tennessee wins it 24 to 14 some low scoring games so far uh, we've got clemson and oklahoma as the final quarterfinal matchup the final one in the uh, first round again a lot of losses here 10 and 3 for clemson 10 and 2 for oklahoma who's going to make it through to face tennessee in the semifinals oh my gosh there's a high scoring game oklahoma wins it 59 to 28 absolutely blowing out clemson and the tigers end their season 10 and 4 oklahoma moves to 11 and 2 and will face tennessee so let's go ahead and go into our eight team playoff and set up our semifinals step two we will open up the file and while it loads, gosh, I got to think uh, West Virginia is going to be a difficult team. They ended the season number three in the country. I assume at this point, they're probably up to number two with the, their win. Although Oklahoma, I guess, was number two and they just blew out Clemson. But there we are in the Orange Bowl against the Mountaineers, Falls and Sooners in the Cotton Bowl. Uh, I'm curious to see who's going to make it through. I think that we should be expected to win this one, but the Mountaineers certainly not a bad team this year. 12-1 Big 12 champs versus us, 14-0 SEC champs. We gotta hope for the best, but unfortunately, that's gonna have to wait until the next episode. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to hit like. Helps out the channel quite a bit. Uh, you know, helps us grow. Uh, so does subscribing. If you haven't done that already, please feel free to go down and Hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when new videos are posted. And then while you're down there, please feel free to head to the description where you can find links to uh, my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and as always, the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys, wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios.